One summer when I was 20 years old, I had this idea that I wanted to leave my house and not go back home for 10 days. I didn't want to sleep on friends' couches or in motel rooms. I wanted to just walk to different towns, cities, and in between to meet people and find adventures. Kind of like the TV show Kung Fu, but without the martial arts, spiritual training, or wisdom. I couldn't quite explain it, but I knew I needed to get out there and try it, just to see what would happen. Luckily, I had a few like-minded friends who were eager for some type of unscripted adventure. This was well before I even considered long-distance hiking as a thing that I would end up doing. At the time, I was more enamored with a hobo kind of lifestyle, living on the fringes of society with nothing holding me to a single place. One day, we all set off on our journey. The second day into our walk, someone pulled over in an SUV and offered us a ride to the next town. We got in and were dropped off 20 minutes later. It felt like time traveling. That was my first time hitchhiking, but it would be far from my last. Later that summer, I hitchhiked back and forth across the continent. Eventually, when I discovered long distance hiking, hitchhiking became part of those adventures as well, leading us to today's video, how to hitchhike. There are definitely some safety and personal security issues to keep in mind if you're going to be getting into a complete stranger's car. I will cover that in detail in my next video, Hitchhiking Safety. In this first video, it'll be more of an introduction and how to. So let's get started. You may think hitchhiking is just you find a road, you stick your thumb out, and you wait for someone to stop and pick you up. And well, you would be exactly right. That is what hitchhiking is. But I can go over a few tips, tricks, and techniques that might make the process a little bit easier. In that little introduction I just gave, I said you find a road, you stick your thumb out, and you wait for someone to stop and pick you up. So even though that is true, you don't actually need to stick your thumb out. You could have a sign. Some people would have a sign that would have the name of the next town they're trying to get to, you know, Seattle, Chicago, Portland. So drivers know that that's your final destination. Some hikers that would be on like the Appalachian Trail or PCT might have their sleeping pad and just write town on the back of it to let drivers know they're just trying to get to town to resupply. So that's a technique that could work as well. I guess actually you don't even need a road. You could be in the back country and see if someone would give you a ride on the back of their horse. Or maybe at a marina and see if you could get um, a ride on a fishing boat or a ferry out to a remote island. You could even hitchhike at an airport and see if you could get onto an airplane. I've never tried that before, but I bet if you waited long enough, it actually would happen. Something else that's a good idea before you head out on a long hitchhiking adventure would be to check state laws regarding hitchhiking, because um, they could vary state to state. I know in general, across the United States at least, hitchhiking is completely legal. They might vary a little bit from state to state, so it's always a good idea to check and see what's going on. Um, but obviously you can't hitchhike anywhere where there's signs like on the interstate itself where there's a sign that says no pedestrians beyond this point. You can't be standing on the interstate and hitchhiking. Most of the times when I would get a ride and I was looking to travel on the interstate, I would stand near the on-ramp so that way people knew that that's where I was headed. But you can't be on the interstate itself. And obviously if you see other signs near like uh, prisons or something where it says no hitchhiking you might want to not do it in that area too. Adventures I've done in the past um, the police have given me a hard time only a few times and in those situations they mostly just check your ID and want to make sure you're not wanted or something and let you go on your way but when I was on the Appalachian Trail for example or on the Oregon Coast Trail and I needed to hitchhike into town to get resupplied um, I never got hassled by the cops at all in sections like that. I think it's mostly because they're so used to seeing hitchhikers from the trail just headed to town back and forth to resupply. So in most cases, you likely wouldn't have any problems um, along the long distance trails. But if you're going to be traveling by interstate or going long distances between states, it's always a good idea just to see what those state laws are before you get yourself into a little bit of trouble. Now I'll go over a couple of techniques that I've used in the past to help me get rides a little bit easier. One of the most important things you can pay attention to is where you're standing. You want to be standing in a spot where the drivers can see you from a good distance away, where they can look at you, know you want to ride, and make the decision whether they want to stop and pick you up. Then once they've made that decision, they can pull over safely so you can get in the car and you both can be on your way. If you're standing in the wrong spot, you'll increase your wait times longer than you have to or you might not get a ride at all. For example, if you're right around a blind corner, as drivers come around the corner at a good rate of speed, They'll see you standing there, but before they even know you're looking for a ride, you're in their rearview mirror and they're gone. 
So you want to make sure that they have enough time to see you, know you want to ride, and be able to pull over to pick you up. Um, also, if there's no shoulder or there's no parking lot or no pull off where they can safely pull off after they've made the decision, then that's also a bad spot because even if they're like, hey, I want to give that guy a ride, but there's no spot to stop, they're not going to damage their car or put themselves in danger just to give some dirty stranger a ride. Another good tip, especially for hikers looking to get to town to resupply or get to hostels, is don't stash your gear. Keep your gear out where drivers can see it. The main reason for this is this identifies you as a hiker. So people that live close to the trails might be used to seeing hikers all the time and might be willing to pick somebody up that's just, you know, out for an adventure on the hiking trails, but less likely to pick somebody up if they're just, you know, a guy on the side of the road sticking his thumb out. So to have your gear out, it shows that you're a hiker and people might be more likely to pick you up. Another thing you can do that may help you get rides a little more easily is to travel in a group. When I hitchhiked across the country, I traveled with a group of friends, and when a lot of drivers would pick us up, they said that they were more likely to stop to get a group of friends on the side of the road rather than just a single person. I think when they see two or three people, they think that, oh, they're out on an adventure together, rather than a single person where they might question their motivations or think they escaped from somewhere. And the reason why I said it might seem counterintuitive is because I remember when I started hitchhiking, the thing I thought was, oh, they'll have limited space in their car to pick up a single person. And that can be true. But oftentimes they would pull over and just say, everybody cram in the back seat, or I got a lot of rides in the back of pickup trucks. And I think people like giving hitchhikers rides in the back of pickup trucks because they don't actually have to have close interaction with them. They can just pull over, you can get in the back, and then when you get to your destination, you can jump out and with a wave, you're on your way. So I wouldn't be afraid of hitchhiking in groups or thinking that you would be less likely to get a ride. I think in general, you might be more likely to get a ride. The last hitchhiking tip I'm going to give today may be the most important one, and it's just to smile. So as you're standing there with your thumb out, looking at the cars passing by, just have a smile on your face. Even if you've had a tough day or it's raining or you're cold or, you know, you're sunburned or tired, just having a smile on your face makes people more likely to stop and give you a ride. I've heard from tons of drivers that the main reason why I stopped to get you is because you were smiling. So that's a great tip. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check back next time for the second part of this video, Hitchhiking Safety.